Oceans cover 71% of the Earth's surface, yet most of the underwater ecosystems remain unexplored. Deep sea regions are found in every ocean across the world, starting at 200 metres, which is the beginning of the continental slope. This is where photosynthesis is unavailable due to inadequate levels of light. The majority of the deep sea floor is found between 4,000 and 6,000 metres, although the deepest part, the Mariana Trench, reaches to 10,000 metres. At these depths, light is non-existent and abiotic factors such as darkness, hydrostatic pressure and low temperature occur. Deep sea biodiversity has largely been a mystery until recent years. This is due to the advances in submersibles and image capturing techniques allowing marine scientists to finally be able to explore the depths of the great unknown. Underwater hydrothermal vents are now being discovered worldwide. Chains of these vents are now being found along fault lines such as the Pacific Ring of Fire. These vents occur under extreme pressure where seawater is pushed into fractures. Once inside, rapid heating occurs, picking up chemicals as the water reacts with the hot rock. Hydrothermal vent fluid then gushes out of the sea floor at extreme temperatures. These vents continue to grow when the fluid hits the cold seawater and the metal sulphide drops out to extend the structure. These reactions create an environment where microbes use the chemicals produced to create new organic material to set up food webs. Previously, mining has only occurred under the seabed, harvesting hydrocarbons such as oil and gas. Although today, scientists and mining corporations are now looking into the hydrothermal vents and fluids as they produce rich plumes of sulphide materials. These new technologies and scientific information have companies trying to obtain licenses to mine the higher grades of copper, cobalt, manganese and gold that are found on the seabed. This would occur by sending remotely operated machines to the sea floors at depths of 1.6 kilometres for surveys and planting remote control buoys. Three machines would then be deployed, a bolt cutter, an auxiliary cutter and a collection machine that are all connected by steel cables. Once on the ground, they then send a 3D sonar map back up to the ship operator. The auxiliary cutter harvests steep and uneven areas on the sea floor and then the bulk cutter follows harvesting rock from flat surfaces using a rotating cylinder. The rock is ground up and then sent through the machine where temperature, pressure, density and vibration are measured. The slurry is then deposited and the collection machine follows behind, vacuuming up the slurry and sending it up to the ship. Once on the ship, the slurry is dried and filtered on a barge and carried back to the shore for further refinement. Although these mining processes have not started, over the past couple of years we have seen nations claiming ocean rights around their countries and islands. Each country automatically gets 200 nautical miles around their region through the UN Treaty. In any international waters, companies can also be contracted to do mining extracts. Although these underwater land grabs have been occurring, there are many groups and individuals in the scientific community concerned about the potential detrimental outcome from mining these high-grade materials. These include resediment from the suspended materials of the mined activities, which has the potential to spread two to five times the size of the originally mined area. Hydrothermal vents are one of the only hard substrates found on the ocean floor, and changes to their sedimentary plume may affect filter feeders, also having an unknown upwelling effect to the above environment. Local species extinction and the loss of rare organisms with low colonisation potential are at risk as well. Research also emphasises the need for understanding species diversity, behaviour and reproductive patterns for the effective management techniques to be created. This is alongside the fact that only a limited number of in situ experiments have been conducted on the sensitivity and recovery time of these areas.
With the increased likelihood of mining at hydrothermal vents, differing working groups now aim to develop guidelines for environmental protection and the exchange of knowledge to ensure effective environmental management when mining. Even suggesting mining inactive vents where species colonies have been abandoned but precious minerals still are present. Although these deep sea vents do not last forever, we need to question whether mining is the same as a natural event, where the rate of disturbance is approximately once every 4,000 years. And will the increased rate of disturbance not just have a detrimental effect on the surrounding environment, but also a rippled effect into our communities?